everybody how's it going welcome to a bonus edition of the chronicles of a guna podcast don't worry the mailbag episode is on its way it's being recorded straight after this but i felt like i needed to speak a little bit on manchester city's victory at fulham call it therapy if you like because i am feeling super super deflated right now this was the game fulham away was the fixture that I looked at a few weeks ago and thought, this could be the one. This is the one where City could potentially drop points. And I tried to convince myself not to watch this game. I tried to find things to do this morning that would distract me from this game. And I don't know what happened, but I I just seemed to get through everything and got to about 12 o'clock and thought, oh, I've got nothing else on my kind of to-do list today. Maybe I should watch it. Maybe I should just watch some of it. And 10 minutes in, Fulham were playing quite well. They were knocking the ball around nicely, confidently at the back. And I thought Manchester City aren't quite at it today. And I allowed myself to get sucked in. I allowed myself, even briefly, to believe that Fulham could take something off of Manchester City. And I'm recording this now as we're in the 88th minute of Fulham nil Manchester City three currently. That's what the score is at the time I'm recording this right now. City might go and add another one. Who knows? But this is like the worst possible outcome. Look, they're on the attack again. Oh, good defending from Palina. They're on the attack again and they've already got three goals on the board, three points on the board as well, which obviously puts us under immense pressure going to Old Trafford, but takes the wind out of our sails as well. Now, look, I don't expect the players to look at tomorrow's game any differently, and they'll maybe be looking at the Spurs game for City on Tuesday as one that could be crucial. Obviously, our players, our team, our manager have got to stay fully focused and try and take this to the last day. That's the goal. That's the aim. And if you win it from there, well, then happy days. But it's difficult not to feel any deflation as an Arsenal fan because City haven't actually played that well today, yet here they are. And I I just want to go back to the first goal that Fulham conceded. It was so amateurish. It was so clear that this Fulham team, yeah, you know what, when they got the ball, they'll knock it around a little bit and they'll try and strut their stuff and, you know, they'll, they'll give it a little bit of something when in possession. But the minute they have to do the hard work, the hard graft, the hard yards at this point in the season where they are literally on the beach, they were never going to do that. And you saw that with Josko Gvardiol's run and the space he found himself in. And who has a left back that finishes like that? He's got two today. Who else in the league has a left back that can bloody finish like that? That's what we're up against. We're up against the team of machines. And I'm not just talking about the starting 11. I'm talking about beyond that as well. But as Arsenal fans, this is really, really difficult to take and really, really hard to process. And I'm keen for it not to spoil my weekend, but it might have already done that. You know, it might have already done that. And I'm sitting here at, 2 2 15 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon where I'm at home for once. I'm off. I'm not that busy today. And I'm just down. And I'm sure so many other Arsenal fans are feeling this way at the moment because whatever we do, it just isn't bloody good enough. This team are relentless. Think about what we've achieved in 2024 so far, okay? Of all the league games we've played, we've only dropped points in two of them. One of them was up at Manchester City, very respectable result, and even more so given that we'd already taken three points off them earlier in the season. So four points from Manchester City is a pretty bloody good return. And the only other game we've dropped points in was that bitterly disappointing defeat at home to Aston Villa, which people are going to point to if we don't go on and win this Premier League title. And while I keep saying, like, whatever happens, 
between now and the end. It's not failure for Arsenal. It's progress again from Arsenal. And we have to accept and we have to understand the level of the side that we're up against. And the fact that we're even running them close and taking it into the final couple of games of the season is huge. It's a really big achievement for a side that four years ago, three years ago even, were nowhere near Manchester City's level. Nowhere near it. Not even close. But at the time, it's really difficult to kind of see it through that lens and be very much glass half full rather than glass half empty. And to say I'm deflated right now would be an understatement. And I just hope that when we go up to Old Trafford tomorrow, we can perform, we can take all three points and we can keep the chase alive. And if we continue to keep the chase alive and come the final day of the season, we miss out. I think all of us will applaud the valiant effort. We'll all be proud of how the team took it down to the wire and all the rest of it. But this weekend has the potential now to be super deflating. And listen, I, I think that we we probably beat Manchester United tomorrow. That's been my prediction from the outset. But it isn't going to be an easy game. It's going to be a difficult game. There's no doubt about that. And I looked at some of the odds yesterday uh, for some of this weekend's games. We did a section on, on the Talksport 2 show with a representative from William Hill who had Manchester United at six to one. Manchester United at six to one at home is wild. You know, I know that we're a good side. I know that we're a very, very good side, but it, it just feels like there's way too much pressure on us in a game that I don't think is going to be uh, a complete walk in the park and, 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 you know, a cruise essentially. And I just, yeah, I, I just wanted to come on and, and talk about, how I'm feeling right now, because I, I don't really know how you cope with this stuff. I've been in such a foul mood from the 12th minute of this game. My wife and kids were out today. My wife takes my kids out to some classes on Saturday mornings and she came home and they came home and I was just unhappy, miserable. And everyone could tell they're saying, daddy, daddy, what's the matter? Manchester City are winning, son. That's what's the matter. And as the game's gone on, I even found myself, right? Listen to this. This is ridiculous, right? This is ridiculous. I'm not proud of this at all. But both my kids were, at the time, Manchester City were on the attack to score their second goal, which was ultimately the one that killed all the hope, right? My kids were arguing over a toy and they were sort of raising their voices at each other. A five-year-old and a two-year-old pulling for the same toy, you, you know, it gets loud. It gets a little bit crazy. And then Manchester City scored. And do you know what my response was? That's your fault, kids. Because Fulham couldn't defend properly because they were distracted by you guys making a load of noise. I mean, it just came out. I didn't think about it. It just came out. What a ridiculous thing to say. But is there clearer evidence of the fact that Manchester City have gotten under my skin I can't even imagine how Liverpool fans must have felt throughout the last few years, having to go head to head, toe to toe with this juggernaut, with this machine, week in, week out, season after season, and ended it and ended up feeling disappointed on most of the times, most of the occasions. There's about three minutes of stoppage time to go in this game as I'm watching it right now. Fulham nil, Manchester City three currently. City are on the attack again. And do you know what? As I say, the worst thing about this, oh my God, they're going to get a fourth. No, they're not good defending. Worst thing about this is that they've taken a big chunk out of our goal difference as well. Oh, he's given a penalty. Anthony Taylor's given a penalty and he's sent off the up. So Manchester City have an opportunity now to make it four. Our goal difference, the goal difference that we've been banging on about for weeks as something that could be decisive in this title race is diminishing before our very own eyes. And remember, right, they've still got two games to play after this weekend. We've got just the one. So the goal difference thing feels like it's going to be cancelled out. Oh, or at least it's going to be very, very close. Josko Gvardio is on a hat-trick. Is he going to take this penalty kick? No, he's not. He's going to walk away from it. He hasn't got a problem, apparently, with not taking it. Surprised they didn't offer it to him, to be honest. But anyway, it looks like they're going to make it four. We'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, the goal difference thing, big problem. 
because from six, the advantage, if they convert this penalty, which Julian Alvarez is standing over now, is going to go down to two with two games left for each side to play. There it is. He's put it in the bottom corner. Julian Alvarez, Fulham nil, Manchester City four. They just suck the life out of title races. They suck the life out of opposition fans. And the sooner Pep Guardiola leaves this football club, the better for everybody in the Premier League because this league has become boring, predictable. And as I say, although when I think about this probably tomorrow morning, and, and I'll probably feel like this even more so if Arsenal go and do their job at Manchester United tomorrow, I'll say, well, credit to Arsenal for keeping up with this lot. And I'll feel a lot more positive. But right now, and this is the problem with the title race because the emotion swings one way and then swings the other. So you feel deflated today. You've got to pick yourself up tomorrow. And if you beat Man United at Old Trafford, a place that we've only won once in our last 16 visits to, then you're going to be buzzing, aren't you, with that result? And then you feel positive again. And then you look at the last uh, couple of games that City have and you're hoping and praying they're going to drop points there. And it's the way that your emotions go from one end of the spectrum to the other in such short windows of time that make this really emotionally taxing and draining and hard to process. Manchester City have won again. And whilst I hoped that today would be the day that they would drop points, it wasn't to be. And so all we can do at Old Trafford tomorrow is do our jobs. Right now, I think you have to try and force yourself to look at it through the more positive lens. You have to keep telling yourself, no, we should be praised. We should be happy. We should be satisfied with the fact that we're at the very least competing with this side. They're two points clear of us now at the top of the Premier League table. And the goal difference is just too different. We could still do it on goal difference, you know. It's not impossible. But we got to win our two games and hope. Oh, let me know how you're coping with this in the comment section below. I'm going to wrap it up there. It was just a short um, little uh, monologue, I guess, to kind of share with you guys how I'm feeling having just watched Manchester City cruise to another victory in the Premier League in the game that I thought could be the game that might see them drop points. But no, no such luck for us. Manchester City are flying. It's over to the Arsenal now. I'll catch you all very, very soon with the mailbag edition, which will be with you within the next few hours. Do enjoy. Catch you all soon. Goodbye.